Welcome to my channel. This is Rashid. I have 23 years of IC design experience, including 19 years at Intel. In this video, I'm going to talk about why it's important to understand hardware description languages such as Verilog or System Verilog or VHDL. So I, I am these days preparing a challenge for, uh, for System Verilog. Um, so I was busy uh, doing preparing content for that. So I didn't get time to create videos here. But anyway, today I thought, okay, I was looking at, okay, why uh, engineers from different areas within IC design, it's important for them to know um, little or more depending upon their area, um, any hardware description language, especially the one where their main design is being written. So I have put here, yes, four different points. So first of all, if you are new in IC design, you want to learn IC design. And so many people ask me that question, that we want to start an IC design career. What is a good point for us to start? So if, if that is the case, then you have to understand the basics. For example, the digital IC design um, for, for that field, it's as I'm, I'm creating the videos. So you need to understand first digital logic design. That's the first thing. Then it's also important for you to understand computer architecture. Once you go through the theory, once you go through the videos or books or whatever, in order to understand gates, how gates are connected together to make combination circuits or sequential circuits. And later on, it's also important to understand some higher level concepts on a computer architecture. So just by going through them is not enough. I think I mentioned that before too. It's very important that you implement those things, uh, implement them and somehow provide an input and measure the output, see the output. By doing that, you will really understand those underlying concepts. These hardware description languages and then free simulators, they provide you a very good way to implement those concepts and understand them. You can all day read about computer architecture, but unless and until you implement that, you won't understand it really well. So first thing, the reason why it's important for you to understand, not be master of these uh, description languages, but need to understand the core concept and be comfortable in implementing things, is that you need to implement the theory that you have read. That's the first. And also it has the second part, which I already started. It's a great way for you to start in this field. So all those people who ask me the question is the first thing is you go through digital logic design, the one just like I did videos on combination and sequential circuits. Then after that, uh, ideally you need to understand some concept of computer architecture, but even before that to implement combinational and sequential circuits, you need to understand a language. You don't need to be master of that, but you need to understand that, start coding in that, because even in IC design, the most of the job that you will see will be in RTL design or verification. And that's where you need to understand the core concepts of very log or system very log. All right, those are one and two things. Third thing is a pretty, of course, if you really want to go in depth in RTL as an RTL designer, or RTL validation, both are equally important. A lot of people who is really I want to go to design, but verification is totally important. Then if you get an opportunity, go in there. Um, that's where you, you need a lot more people on validation. So for those, you need to be master of RTL design and the different validation techniques, not just in the basic very log system, very log, but you know, it goes beyond that, like UVM and all that. So it's pretty obvious that those people need to know RTL. Or, uh, by the way, I use sometimes RTL. And when I use RTL register transfer logic, I really mean hardware description languages. Um, the whole RTL is written in an, the hardware description languages such as VHDL, Verilog, or System Verilog. So those three areas. Uh, the fourth one is physical design. Okay, if you are a physical design, and I did physical design for into 19 years. I can tell you, if you are doing gate level synthesis, pretty obvious, you need to understand RTL. 
Um, this is an area that you want to understand uh, data flow. You want to understand what kind of structures are in the RTL, uh, what kind of modules are, what kind of hierarchies are, how some of the critical components, um, adders, multipliers, decoder, multiplexers, how are those implemented in RTL? Maybe some of those need to be implemented in a better way to generate a better hardware. Synthesis tools will do their best to optimize the RTL of very log or system very log. But sometimes they need some help from both, actually a lot of them they need help from both the RTL designers, the designers, the people who actually code in, in system very log, and also people who are synthesizing them, creating constraints, or creating a recipe there. So knowing that, knowing your IP, your, knowing the data flow, knowing your critical path, knowing your uh, clocks, all that, a physical design person, uh, especially the synthesis person first, then the timing person, of course, and also place a route people because they will come across paths which were not a problem in synthesis, but became a problem in placement. Um, the congestion, um, the, the routing congestion or the placement of different cells, they need to move certain cells and they need to go and revisit um, the RTL again. So all these people with different degree of understanding, it's helpful to understand the core concepts, how the main hardware is written and how they can understand it, uh, analyze it and optimize it. Even the floor plan people, I think even those people just to understand where the data is flowing, what component they need to place um, with each other and where in the chip, they need to understand that too. DFT, I didn't touch it, but it's pretty obvious. DFT people, right? They are a part of RTL, which integrates with the rest of the RTL. So they are like RTL people anyway. Even post silicon, um, my team at Intel, they did an analysis, the, 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 they were part of the post silicon validation. And sometime even for that, you have to look at RTL, open it. Okay, where is that module? Where is that hierarchy? Uh, how is that being connected in RLM? Because sometimes just looking, opening up an RTL is much easier than opening up some netlist or heavy netlist and loading in the tools and all that. You All you need is an editor, VI, to open an RTL file and look at what's happening. So yeah, and emulation, pretty obvious emulation. People who take the same RTL code and implement that on FPGS code, they need to know uh, RTL or very large system, very large. So yeah, those are all the things that came to my mind that why I think it's important that you have some understanding of a very log or system very log. Hopefully that helped. And if you have questions or comments, uh, please put those um, in, in this video or uh, send me um, on my LinkedIn or my email. And don't forget to watch all the uh, combinational sequential videos and then the CMOS and all that I did and these days I'm doing uh, system very log and uh, hopefully I'll bring some free content on system very log too and after that we will get into physical log. See you, bye.